as a man of the people, I have to keep you folks up to date. And I learned a new term this week. It's called labor hoarding. And you know, there's always new terms coming out all the time. And so this is a term that economists have spun up. And um, it is basically, I think, a sign of good news that maybe we won't see mass layoffs that so many people are scared of when you hear the word recession. So on that note, news out today and yesterday that a large portion of economists are pretty much guaranteeing that we will move into a recession either late in 2022 or in 2023. Okay, so that's two straight quarters of the gross domestic product. You can look this up on your own, uh, but there are, there are clear economic data points. And when we have two straight quarters of those data points showing us retraction, then you're in a recession. And let's be clear, the Fed and Jerome Powell, they, they outkicked their coverage. Too much cash uh, was released from the Fed into the economy and now we're paying the price for it so now they have they've signaled that they don't have any other moves to make other than drive unemployment up and they're trying but what's crazy is it ain't working so now here comes a term that you learned in fifth or sixth grade and i'm not going to nerd out on it but go look up stagflation at some point you got a quiz or a test on it here's what it means it means inflation is high and the economy is lagging. You never want that. You don't want that. And that's where we're headed, so say the economists. All right. So as a result, companies who laid off so many people, and by the way, it was about 22 million. 22 million people were laid off during the pandemic. And companies learned their lesson. They're like, those people didn't come back. There's a novel idea. Hey, we're going to furlough and lay off a bunch of people because we got freaked out, right? And now we can't get them to come back. So now companies are going, whoa. You'll remember our friend, uh, Julia Pollack, who's the chief economist at ZipRecruiter. And she's been on the show multiple times. This is a quote. This is from an Inc. Magazine article. She's quoted. She says, as the cost of losing people to layoffs and firings has grown, the number of layoffs and firings has fallen. Labor market dynamics have fundamentally changed. Time to hire, the amount of time it takes to list and fill a job. Recruiting costs, hiring outside recruiting firms, you got to pay for that, folks. Uh, and hiring costs have all grown substantially. Hiring costs would be the signing bonuses that we read about, increased in, uh, income in the form of salaries and hourly wages. So here we stand with a current job situation where we still have right about two job openings for every person who is unemployed. So that means it's harder for companies to get talent. So now they go, we may be going into a recession and we got to find ways to keep our people. I don't want to let them go because it's already hard enough to find people. I don't want to get in a situation where we can't hire. July 2022 was the 16th straight month in which the layoff rate was below pre-pandemic levels that has continued. Economist Dr. Julia Coronado of the Macro Policy Perspective said this, it has been such a tough road to staffing up and turnover is still so high, firms are reluctant to freeze hiring and plan to use any slowdown to acquire hold on to top talent. So it's the exact opposite. So this term labor hoarding has been applied where companies are going, we're going to keep employees even in tough times or do everything we can to do so, so that we don't have all of the challenges of hiring coming out of the recession. So what does it mean? It means that companies are hesitant to lay people off or even fire problem people. Whoa. So it has swung the leverage, if you will, from the boss to the employee, from the leader to the worker. They're putting up with problem employees more because of fear. I don't think it's right. I still think you have to act with good leadership principles in times of uncertainty, just as much as you do in times of certainty. Uh, so this means 
the Federal Reserve is increasing interest rates to fight inflation and, and cool the economy. But here's the problem. It may not trigger the kind of job loss they're hoping for. And that's what I just said. I think we might move into stagflation because, wait a second, inflation is going to keep going up and certain parts of the economy may go down. We might. We might not. But if we go into a full-blown recession, we will be in stagflation. Uh, decades ago, the Fed chair, Paul Volcker, used the same playbook. And this is why I get mad sometimes. As I tell you folks, this is moronic. I don't want to go into the history lesson because I nerd out. I don't want to do that to you fine folks. But Paul Volcker did this. Joe will remember. I remember. They drove unemployment to over 10% to fight inflation. Bunch of adults, and they dust off this bad playbook. That's what they're trying to do. Well, what happens if companies don't lay off people? Are they going to keep raising interest rates? What's going to happen? Well, nobody really knows. Uh, but we are seeing signals that companies are trying to hang on to more people than they might need. So what's going to happen? Profit margins will shrink. All right? Companies are going to go, well, normally in a season of recession, we would cut costs. We're going to retain these costs because we think it's going to shake out in the end. So in other words, companies are battening down the hatches. It's an old phrase, right? And what does that mean? That means when the storm is coming, you get in the storm shelter, right? Or you you put the storm shutters that nobody actually ever uses. Back in the old days, the reason to have shutters is because they would shut those pieces of wood up against the glass to avoid the glass shattering. It was a way of hunkering down to use another old phrase. Boy, I'm bringing out all the old phrases today. Batten down the hatches. Hunker down. That means prepare for a storm. And they're just going to try to ride out the storm. Uh, but here are some of the signs to see that we think it's happening. Low level of layoffs, high level of job openings. We're seeing that right now. That's a sign of what they're calling labor hoarding. Another sign. Uh, hourly workers aren't getting the overtime. They aren't getting the hours that maybe they used to get or they would expect to get because companies have more people so they can pass the hours around. Um, and, of course, workers aren't as abundant and expendable as they once were. Here's what happened. People ask me all the time, Ken, why do we have the big gap? to where we sit today, to where there's roughly two jobs available for every worker that's unemployed and wants to be employed. What you have to look at is the number of boomers that retired in the midst of the pandemic. They're basically like, screw this, I'm out. They laid me off, they furloughed me, I'm done. I can retire, maybe a little tighter than I wanted it to be, but I'm going to go ahead and retire. And they haven't returned. That's your biggest reason for the gap, is a lot of boomers said, I'm done. Um, and then new jobs were created. So all that together puts us where we stand. So here's the deal. I don't know that we're going to see mass layoffs, and that's good news. But keep saving. Keep working hard. You're going to make it through this storm. I promise.